Hi guys, I'm Mike Dawson. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are down at Woburn Golf Club filming with PXG for the launch of their new Gen 2 Woods. We're going to do a series of videos, some fitting videos, me getting fit for the new Woods and the new driver. We're going to have a look how it compares, what the benefits are that could be for you putting this in your bag and just have some fun. It is beautiful out here right now. Very cold though. So it's going to be an awesome day. This is? Really? Tour average is 44 and a half. So it's actually still really? half an inch longer than a Tour driver. <laughs> yeah, which what over your yeah. driver yeah. would be. What are, what are other brands stock, stock, stock length? So typically know. they start at 45 and a half inch, 45 yeah, so and three quarters. So they're always over our drivers, yeah. typically maybe three quarters on average longer. Yeah. Because, so, because yeah. robot, robot testing, and yeah, yeah. like not picking on any other brands, because I would, yeah, not, yeah. if a customer needs a 46 inch shaft, yeah. I'll fit in 46. But it's generally because on robot testing, it means the ball speed's quicker because yeah. the club head speed's moving quicker. Yeah, exactly. Does that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Whereas I would far prefer for you to find the middle of the face yeah. more consistently and then ball fairway. speed's going to go up, and then I'm exactly. going to hit it longer and straighter. Exactly. So for everyone watching, shorter driver shaft, try it out, see if you can get fit properly. I do think it's a sh shame how people just don't get fit properly. Like, look how much gear I've got with me. Yeah, exactly. I've got just over 400. I mean, between me and LP standing here today, there are there are a handful over 800 shafts with us. So it's like, why would you go into a shop and yeah. buy something off the shelf for yeah. essentially what would be exactly the same price yeah. to spend, even if you only spend an hour yeah. with me, yeah. which is a fully free of charge process. Yeah, yeah, Get exactly. It properly. Kind of a low ball always been your thing? Uh, so no, I mean, I tend to either be one or the other. I tend to either be smashing it way up into the air or really pull it low. The last six months have been pretty low, really. I do like to see my driver fly quite high yeah, absolutely. With, the, with the ability to knock it down and get that one like into wind or if you're on a link to something absolutely. like that. But then if you're downwind or something, you really want to get it up there. That's a rainfall. Champer impact, how far ahead his hands are of the ball. It's just, I mean, you see the ball come out and it's just so low, and you're like, it's, but it just stays at that height. It's like a um, Fitzpatrick. Yeah, exactly. Fitzpatrick can basically hit a cut that he barely launches. Yeah. And, and you're like, oh, that'll die out the air, and it just keeps going. Yeah, yeah. And that must have so much spin on it. Yeah, exactly. So basically, probably the fairway. If, if you go up, yeah. If you go up in launch, spin goes has to go down. Yeah. If you if you launch absolute bullets, there has to be spin on it to actually create lift on the ball. Otherwise, yeah. it would drop out of the sky. Yeah. You can miss strike this head and get away with a fair bit. Yeah, I mean, not I like I see on that quite. If I hit it off a toe, you can notice as well. Like when you watch it back, it, it, it opens up a lot through impact. Like. I don't know if I can hit better. Torsals. 
that's a, the biggest thing on that one there is like you presented some good loft yeah. but from your driver spin's gone down to 2 1 yeah so your peak height on that one there is have i got it on there i'll pull it up in a second no so peak height for me is still a little low at 80 foot yeah i, yeah. I want to see it yeah. higher but i just yeah. know that's how you're delivering it yeah, today yeah. but the good thing is you're just taking that spin down a little bit so Carry's pretty good, but carry will come up significantly when you fly it, up, yeah. and then all, and then at a total of 303 is great because it's low spin, it's going to run. But I know at your kind of club speed, you can yeah. actually really get it flighting. Yeah, yeah. Let's do a slight change up on yeah. there without awesome. cranking loads of loft yeah, into yeah. it. Let's even give you. I'm going to change you into the XF head. So XF okay. is is still a very low spinning profile of head. Yeah. It means I can move loads of weight back. So yeah. through impact, I'm just going to try and present more loft on the head without cranking loft. Yeah, so guys, they have two different models here. It's the XF and the or X, 0811X. 0811X. And XF. And XF. These two. And the XF is the low spinning one, is that right? X. X yeah, is the low so spinning one. Okay. Your right hand is our lower spinning one, especially okay. when you've got weight uh, I see, yeah. forward. You can move the spin back and make it slightly higher MOI oh, gotcha. by moving the tungsten further back in the head. Yeah. We're going into XF just because I want to see it flies a little easier. Yeah. Um, it's not exactly going to crank spin up too much for you, but it'll be interesting to see if we start flighting it. Definitely. And the silver screws, are they the tungsten? They're tungsten. They're so the tungsten, so they're a lot heavier. Correct. So at stock, they're yeah. uh, 4.1 grams okay. compared to 0.8 of a gram. Uh, okay. We can also have 2.4s put in there as well to really start fine tuning. So down to what a water player likes to fill in terms of weight but also yep. down to how much phase rotation is needed it basically means we can say listen here that's quite great what flight you like to see yeah we need it to land here, here yeah and then you can put in the bias around the edge oh, and stuff like exactly that exactly that awesome there we go perfect okay. cheers yeah so actual setup of the head and then for shaft everything's the same okay. shaft weight remains the same um, it's slightly different um, style of shaft, it's a much smoother loading shaft, still very stable, but I need that ball popping up in the yeah. air, that's really what we're going for. Okay. The actual head is different in the XF because we can move more weight back. I'm trying to basically pop that ball up in the air without spinning. Yeah. Gotcha. And this is the other head, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, because exactly. I can really notice the Which on paper is more of a forgiving head, but from above the ball, you're going to see that the head profile maybe looks slightly larger in the way that the, the head is uh, yeah. is almost longer in length there. Yeah, I can. If I gave you our X and XF in Gen 1, visually from above would almost look identical. Yeah. The X in Gen 2 looks a lot smaller, a lot more compact. Yeah. Because the XF does actually look like an easier bike to hit as well. Yeah. No, it looks nice. Difference in flight. Yeah. Nice. It just stays straight on that line though, doesn't it? I mean that was I mean that was Toe? that was oh, right, right there, okay. yeah. Yeah. Loft wise? Yeah. Loft we do um, nine, nine, ten and a half, twelve, fourteen. So okay. it's a fourteen head. Loft sleeve can go degree and a half either way as well. Okay. So essentially you can do anything driver wise from yeah. kind of seven and a half to fifteen and a half. Yeah, exactly. It, it covers every single uh, area. Everything, yeah. We've had shots that were only going up by 60 foot. Now we're like 90 foot in the air, but low spin, high launch. Lovely. That's a, that was a slight toey one, right? Toey? Yeah. Yeah, fractiony toey, just moving it a bit. It's just flighting so much better. Xbox yeah. crank all the weights into the back of it like we've got an okay. XF just to try and still pop that ball up. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's see that. Feels so nice. It's good, right? Good fit. Even acoustic yeah. sounds good. Mm. So soft. So the actual club itself internally has a, it's got a honeycomb made of elastomer. Okay. Um, I've actually got an example of it from okay. our previous driver. So that there is what's in the driver. Okay, cool. That's in from our Gen 1 driver. It's slightly different going into Gen 2, but that is the same material. So that's, that basically absorbs all those vibrations. So rather yeah. than like a high-pitched clang or yeah. something that feels a bit harsh yeah. off the face, it, like you said, you don't yeah. really get that driver normally where you go, I can actually feel how the ball's coming off the yeah, face. Yeah, that's really, I mean, that's, look at that, how soft that is. That's like, it's not a hard plastic, is it? No, that's the great thing bending is because all it over sits, the place. Because it sits right in the, the very bottom of the club, yeah. right in the, uh, the chassis of it, it lowers the center of gravity. So you've got a carbon crown, which is very, very light in weight, yeah. and then you put a slightly denser material like the tungsten weights in it, um, and 
and the, the elastomer in there, the, the centre of gravity drops, so that's how you start a blurring spin. Currently on your driver setup, basically what you've done is you've taken the all the mass of the club and just completely back weighted it this way, which to be fair can sometimes work for some golfers and sometimes the, the other way. For yourself, actually what it's caused you to do is by taking all the head weight out and moving it to the butt section of the club. Through impact, you end up just leading with the shaft. Leaving the head behind, you then take kind of what would be a 10, 10 degree driver and turn it into six for impact. Which, you know, could do some golfers, but for me it was maybe launching that little bit low. It's a bit there, but it's only going to go so far if it's launching like so. So what we ended up doing is we just went back to a typical kind of D3 swing weight as a starting point, just to try and get you presenting a little bit more long. Um, in the finished product, what we actually went with, because you were projecting a little bit, moved up into, uh, it's a 12 degree in our X head. So it's our lowest spinning head. It's actually in the lowest spinning setup. Now we've got some loft in there. So I've got all the tungsten weight forward in the head. That started giving us all of a sudden a lot more height, which visually you were like, Matt, I really like to see that actually popping the ball in the air. Um, it's slightly flat in the lie setting. It took away that one that just wanted to snipe a little bit left on you, which is a destructive shot. Um, and the shaft we've got in there is a, a Diamana. It's the BF series. And we've got that in a 60TX. We've got plenty of speed in there. And I gave you something that felt a bit too boardy. The, uh, the strike started moving all over the face. So the great thing about the BF series, Helps us flight it a little bit, keeps the spin off it, which is great for you because high launch, low spin, we're going to get it out there. But you just had a bit more feel, feedback and feel of what was happening with the clubs. The strike was far more efficient, started moving away a little bit from the toe strikes, giving you an overall better result. So basically, guys, when I started hitting with my driver, it was launching very low, but it was spinning quite a lot. With this driver, it was launching higher, but spinning less, meaning it's going to carry further, run out more just overall more, more distance really and also more forgiveness i would say I because the biggest thing yeah. is it's like distance is great mm. but if i said i'm going to have you hitting it 400 yards but it's dispersion yeah. is huge then how good is that so the thing for you i think is the toe strike the toe yeah. strike that doesn't just dive low left on you is the fact you hit a couple and then you looked up and you're like all right it's like fairway finder or then hit it out the toe so that's kind of a massively added bonus within the gen 2 head yeah, I definitely hit some out the toe, and honestly, I just saw it go probably 10 yards right of centre. Just no movement on it at all. There was no face rotation. It still felt great. It was solid. I think the most important thing with this driver is sound and feel. Now, hopefully, you guys can hear from the videos we've taken of me hitting this driver. It just sounds awesome, and the feel is just, like, solid and quite soft, and just go try it. Go try it, and... You've got to see for yourself. I can't explain. Just go go out and hit them. Matt, thank you so much Pleasure. for the driver fitting. Really enjoyed it, mate. Thank you. Cheers, awesome. Guys. So, after hitting this driver, benefits. I think the best things, it performed really well. The best things about this driver, it performed amazingly well. I like the concept of it. The concept is make a low spinning driver head and then when you're getting fit for the driver you kind of start at low spin and you can increase the spin as you need to whereas most people do the opposite in a fitting when you start hitting any other driver most of the time you start out very high spin with a stock shaft and then you try and lower that spin down by moving weight forward in the head but what moving weight forward in the head does is makes the driver less forgiving. The XG Generation 2 driver, you are actually starting out from low spin and then as you increase the spin, you're moving the weight back, you're actually making the driver more forgiving, which is great. Everyone loves forgiveness in a driver and low spin. Perfect combination. As I said, it performed really well. I think the most impressive thing for me about this driver, the sound and the feel of it. I can't really explain the feel. It almost felt like a forged iron in the way that it was so soft. The feel of the driver was like, I've, I don't think I've ever hit a driver that felt so soft. And the drivers actually come with this polyamorous material on the inside, which I'll show you now. Um, and it's, as you can see, it's very soft, it's very flexible material, helps with the sound, the acoustics, and the feel of the driver, and also helps keep the CG low. 
um, in the driver to get forgiveness and sort of high launching shots basically. Negatives of this driver. So there are two drivers that I tested. The new generation two comes in an X driver, which is the low spin model and the XF, which is the higher spin model. Um, they're just slightly different shapes. I preferred the X. Um, why did I prefer the X? I think the shape. The XF is slightly more elongated at the back. I didn't see a huge amount of difference between the two drivers. The main difference is as you look at the clubs from the bottom of the driver. One has, the X has more weight towards the front, the XF all the weight is kept towards the back. The look of these drivers is very nice. I mean, it's not too outlandish and brass. They look just very classic, very polished, very high end, rather than coming across as kind of cheap and tacky as sort of some have you know, other brands maybe in the past with really bright colors. Yeah, looks absolutely amazing. Let's talk about the fitting process because I was fit by Matt, who is a PXG master fitter, and I wasn't very aware of what PXG are sort of doing and why they're not in the typical golf stores we, we all go into. So actually PXG don't want to be in golf stores. They don't want you to be able to go into a golf store and buy a driver off the shelf. They want you to get fit by one of their master fitters so that you get the best possible performance and experience and just the best possible product that is suited for yourself, for your own swing. Now that is amazing. That is what every golfer should do. No golfer should ever go into a store, buy a driver off the shelf, not get custom fit, not try any other shafts. Um, and there's no reason not to do it because it doesn't cost any extra money. You could go into, I mean, the new tailor-made drivers, for example. So in the past, PXG were a very expensive brand, very expensive, like maybe double the price of most other brands. You know, you're talking over 2000 pounds for a set of irons. You're talking, I think their drivers used to be something like seven or eight hundred pounds starting price. Their wedges are still like six hundred and fifty pounds or something like that, around that ballpark. But the new drivers have come way down. I mean, they're still expensive, but five hundred and seventy five pounds around that sort of price, starting price for a stock shaft. Now the new tailor-made drivers are 500 pounds starting price. 70, 70, 70 to 75 pounds extra for all you're getting really. I mean, the fitting process, just, I mean, they're really now very close competitors. You know, you're really gonna have to go into a store, think about buying a tailor-made driver and then say, hang on, if I spent 70 more pounds, I could have a PXG driver. And I think for me, the benefit of that as well, not just the performance and getting fit, because you can get fit for other brands' products and you can get fit well for them, but the benefit and the performance of that is also not many people have PXG drivers. I mean, I live in the UK, cannot remember seeing someone with a PXG driver at my golf club or at a competition or anywhere. I mean, I quite like that exclusivity factor. If someone sees you hitting a PXG driver, they're gonna be like, I've never seen a PXG driver before. I've never hit a PXG driver. Tell me more about it or can I give it a go? I like that. I, I do like that. I like that appeal to it. That appeals to me. Having something no one else does or few other people do. <laughs> okay, so the fitting process. Matt from PXG fit me. Very nice guy. Highly recommend you check out his Instagram and get in touch with him if you're interested in getting fit. I will put all his contact details below. I believe his Instagram is pxg underscore Matt. Started out the fitting, took some results with my own driver currently at the moment, which is a tailor-made M3 in a Mitsubishi Tensei Blue 60 gram shaft. I have the same grip as Bryson DeChambeau uses. Matt made me aware of the fact that because I'd put such a thick, 
heavy sort of grip. It basically had the effect of counterbalancing the driver, making the head weight and swing weight of the driver head lighter. Now, that's quite important. If you imagine as you're sort of in your downswing, if you have more weight in the head, the club will sort of catch up faster at the bottom and you'll be able to hit higher launch. Your swing speed will be higher, your club head speed will be higher because you have more weight going through that head. Now that's not to say that that works forever and I've been hitting a very low ball flight. I didn't realize that as soon as I put this grip on, it basically made the head weight lighter. The PXG drivers, now you can get different shaft lengths from them. You can get fit for any shaft length with them. You can go right up to the top or you can go right down if you wanted a shorter length driver. But their stock length is a little bit, I think it's about half an inch less than other brands. Now that's quite interesting because their stock length I think is about 45 and a half or 45 and a quarter, something like that. Now Matt told me the average length of a driver shaft on the PJ Tour is 44 inches. That means that most of us are hitting drivers that are longer than professional golfers use on the PJ Tour who are far more accurate than us anyway. That I found very interesting. And I've always been curious about trying like a shorter driver shaft, seeing how it affects accuracy, that sort of thing. If you're hitting the face in the middle, ball speed's gonna go up consistently, so you're actually gonna hit the ball further, even if the driver shaft is shorter. When I hit my current driver, if I video my swing in slow motion and I hit a shot off the toe, I see the club face flex, like I see it twisting at impact the club face will open more, be affected more and twist more. I didn't see this with the PXG driver. I hit a few shots. I hit one shot off the toe. Let's see if I can hit the There's a difference in flight. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It just stays straight on that line though, doesn't it? I mean, that was, I mean, that was, toe? that was right there, yeah. Okay. yeah. And it was just dead straight. Started a tiny bit right, no shape on it. And I was pretty amazed by that. And I didn't feel any sort of twisting impact. It still felt solid, it still felt great, it still flew great. The flight of it, it didn't drop out the sky. I think I found maybe that the most impressive. The driver shaft I was fitted for by Matt is a Diamana extra stiff 60 gram shaft. We tried a few other shafts and I've been hitting the ball pretty low at the moment. I'm trying to get my ball flight up a little bit. Some of the shafts just came out a little bit too low with too low spin. And also because I don't have a huge pause at the top of my backswing, my transition in the swing is quite quick. So you have to be kind of aware of how the shaft loads at the top of the backswing. I'm not really an expert in this area, but Matt certainly is. They had over 800 shafts. It was pretty incredible to see what these guys know about driver shafts and getting fit and just everything. So, I have some more videos coming out after this one. We're gonna do a three-wood fitting. We're gonna do a Q&A with Matt. Pick his brain a little bit, see what he knows. I'm gonna be doing much more videos with Matt in the future too. We're gonna go really in-depth into the fitting process, give you guys a really good look into it with the whole bag. It's gonna be awesome. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Feel free to like it, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon, and I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day.